Assalamu alaikum students. Good morning grade 2. How are you all? I hope all of you are fine. Welcome again to a new Islamic session. Today insha'Allah my dear students, we are going to start with a new lesson. Lesson 4 in Unit 5, page 152. The topic of the day is about Surah Al-Shams. Did you read this surah before? And do you know this surah in which juzu in Quran? Today, inshallah, we are going to recite this surah together and understand the general meaning of this surah. So, let's start in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And let us recite the dua together. Rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yassir li amri, wahlu l'uqdatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli. By the end of this lesson, you will be insha'Allah able to read Surah Al-Shams correctly, explain the vocabulary of the Surah, explain the general meaning of the Holy Surah, explain that good deeds purify the heart and recite Surah Al-Shams by heart. Now, grade 2, I want you to imagine with me what will happen if the sun sits and doesn't rise on earth. What will happen? Girls and boys, what do you think? How many lamps do we need to light the earth if the sun sits and doesn't rise on earth then how many lamps do we need to light the earth million or more than this how many stuffs do we need to spread warmth everywhere how many heaters do we need to spread warmth everywhere million more than million hundred millions okay let us mention together four benefits of the sun the sun gives us light, what else? Warm, what else? Yes, try to remember from the science subject. Yes, the most important things, light and warm. Okay, I search the Quran index for Surah Shams. And write the number of the surah. Can you open the Quran? Any Quran you have in your home? Check the index of the Quran, the first page, and tell me the number of Surah Al Shams. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. By the sun and its brightness. And by the moon when it follows it. And by the day when it displays it. And by the night when it conceals it. And by the sky and he who constructed it. And by the earth and he who spread it. And by the soul and he who proportioned it. And inspired it with discernment of its wickedness and its righteousness. He has succeeded who purifies it. And he has failed who instills it with corruption. Thamud denied their prophet by reason of their transgression. 
when the most wretched of them was sent forth. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَتَ اللَّهِ وَسُقَيَاهَا And the Messenger of Allah said to them, Do not harm the she-camel of Allah or prevent her from her drink. فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسَوَّاهَا But they denied him and hamstrung her. So their Lord brought down upon them destruction for their sin and made it equal upon all of them. And he does not fear the consequence thereof. And after listening to the recitation of the holy verses and translation, let us understand the meaning of the vocabulary. The first one, wabuhaha, was shamsi wabuhaha. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the sun, by the sun, and its light, the light of the sun. Wal ardi wa ma tahaha, tahaha. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the earth, the earth, tahaha. He subhanahu wa ta'ala who spread it. Okay? وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking about a soul. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala created it in a perfect shape. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Showed it the paths of evil and good and left it to choose between them, okay? We will talk later about these ayat, okay? The meaning of these ayat. Now, just the vocabulary to understand and memorize, okay? Mba'atha went forth quickly. Fa'aqaruha slaughtered it and killed it or killed it. I will tell you the story about this uh, tribe, tribe of Thamud later, inshallah. And now, let us try to understand the general meaning of the holy verses. The surah began with an oath of Allah, swear of Allah Ta'ala, by seven of his great creatures. Memorize these great seven great creatures the first one the sun in which area was shamsi wa buhaha so the first one the sun okay next one the moon wal qamari idha talaha the moon then wan nahari idha jallaha day time the day time okay next one wal layli idha يغشاها. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by the night. Night. Them والسماء وما بناها. السماء here the heaven or the sky. Okay. Heaven or sky. Them. والأرض وما طحاها. Earth. The earth. And the last thing ونفس وما سواها. About the human soul. The human soul. So in the last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the human soul. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed it the paths of evil and good, the paths of bad deeds and good deeds, and left it to choose between them. So the man can choose between the two ways. Okay. The one who chose the good path, which is the one who fear and obey Allah, will succeed and prosper in this world and in the hereafter. But the other one, those who wrong and disobey, will lose and become unhappy in both this life and life in hereafter, in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah started to tell us about the 
story of Saleh alayhi salam and his tribe. Allah Ta'ala mentioned the story of the tribe of Thamud with Allah's messenger, Saleh alayhi salam. They disbelieved their prophet, rebelled and disobeyed the order of their Lord, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. He Ta'ala ordered them to leave the she-camel to graze on the land of Allah and not harm it, but they killed it. And so Allah Ta'ala destroyed them with the thunderbolt. So grade two, you can check the story of uh, the Prophet Saleh alayhi salam, the Messenger Saleh and uh, his tribe. In this link, you can go through YouTube and check that story and listen to the story now in this slide. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum assalam, Baba. What were you doing, Amr? I was just reading this book on prophets. Hmm, can I see that? Of course, here. Hmm, stories of prophets, mashaAllah. Baba, can you tell me the story of Prophet Saleh today? <laughs> I can see that you are getting very interested in the prophet stories. I'm learning a lot from your stories. Thank you so much, Baba. Mm, all right, I will tell you the story of Prophet Salih alayhi salam today. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Salih alayhi salam. Allah had destructed the city of Ad because of the The tribe of Thamud succeeded them in power and glory. The people of Thamud, like the people of Ad, were hard-working and excellent craftsmen. Like their forefathers, they too made buildings on the top of mountains, and they lived in beautiful houses. Their lands were fertile, and it gave them abundant crops as well. But as their material wealth increased, so did their evil ways. The tribe was ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and its members did not worship him. The rich and the luxurious became tyrants. The members of the tribe worshipped the idols instead. Prophet Saleh alayhi salam lived during that period of time. He was a good and wise person. The people loved him and respected him for his amazing qualities. Like their forefathers, idol worshipping was rooted deep in the hearts of men and women. The Prophet realized this and he tried to correct them. He knew that even the tribe chiefs were corrupt and bad men. They practiced idol worshipping and encouraged everyone to do so. They even punished those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Saleh alayhi salam was chosen as Allah's messenger. He was not afraid of anyone except Allah, the Great and Almighty. He prayed to Allah without fearing anyone. O oh people, worship Allah. You have no other God but Him, the Prophet said to them. But the people of the tribe said to him, O oh Salih, we always liked you and we thought one day you would become our chief. Now why are you asking us to worship Allah? How can you ask us to leave our gods and worship yours? How can we forget our gods who were worshipped even by our fathers? We do not believe in your god. Go away. They replied back. It was from here that the struggle between the good and the evil began. The Prophet believed in Allah and struggled against the disbelievers. One day, as usual, the members of the tribe gathered around a huge rock on the top of the mountain. They worshipped the rock for a long time and when the children saw their fathers, they started worshipping the rock as well. The people butchered rams as a sacrifice to the rock and sought its blessings. When the Prophet saw this, 
he was sad and said to them, O oh my people, please serve Allah, the one and only true God. Then one of them said, Why do you ask us to pray to Allah alone? Because he has created you, said the Prophet. He gave you everything, the sun, the moon, the mountains, the seas, everything that you see around. Then one of the chiefs came forward and said, Show us a miracle, he said. Show us a miracle and we'll believe you. Then another chief came forward and said, pointing at the rock, Ask your lord to make a living she-camel out of that rock. Then another chief came forward and said, Yes, the camel should be pregnant too. <laughs> he laughed. The prophet thought for a while and replied, If Allah delivers this miracle, do you promise to believe in Allah as the one true God? Will you accept that I am his apostle? Yes, they answered. The prophet then prayed to Allah to grant them this request. It was a miracle. At first, the people heard the sound of rocks breaking apart. Then suddenly the rock fell apart and there it was, a beautiful she-camel. It was huge and it was pregnant too. When people saw the she-camel, they were amazed. They couldn't believe their eyes. Some people believed what they saw just instantly, but some, especially the rich and the powerful, thought that this was magic. The Prophet prostrated before the camel as it was Allah who brought the she-camel out of the rock with his glory. Few other people prostrated before the camel as well, as they now believed in the power of Allah. They had seen a great sign before their eyes. What the Prophet said was true. They said, Allah is the true God. But even now the number of believers were very few. The other's mind was still corrupted and refused to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The she-camel became the symbol for Salih alayhi salam's message. It became the symbol of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After three days, the she-camel gave birth to a lovely young he-camel. The young camel always followed his mother. It stayed behind its mother calmly. And she looked after her son fondly. Very soon, the she-camel and her son became symbols for affection and mercy. When the people of the tribe saw it, they said, This is Salih she-camel. Then the Prophet said to his people, O oh, my people, worship Allah. There is no God but Him. This is a clear sign from your Lord. This she-camel is a sign for you. So leave her to graze on Allah's earth. Be careful not to hurt it. If you do that, then Allah will punish you. Days passed and the she-camel grazed in the green pastures of Thamud. It ate the plants from the valley and drank water from the well. The she-camel was so huge that it drank lots and lots of water. And while it was drinking water from the well, no other animal or people could go near the well. The she-camel nursed the newborn fondly. She gave him her milk. When the people of Thamud saw the milk, their mouths watered. They hurried to the Prophet. The camel's milk may be blessed, they said to him. The baby camel is not going to have all of it, so please let us have some of the she-camel's milk, they requested. The prophet thought for a while, and he said that they were allowed to have the milk of the camel by Allah's grace. However, he asked them to share the water with the camel. He told them that one day they could have the milk of the camel while she drank water from the well. And on the second day, he told them to leave the milk for her child. The people agreed to the Prophet's suggestion. The camel gave plenty of milk and it covered the needs of the entire Thamud. At first, the people were happy and content. But soon, the disbelievers started raising their voices. They hated the Prophet for turning people away from their idols. And their hatred now turn towards the blessed she-camel.
The tribe of Thamud was divided into two parts now. First was the Muslims who believed in Allah and his Prophet. And the second were the disbelievers who thought the Prophet was lying. The disbelievers mocked at the Muslims. They mocked at their beliefs. Do you believe that Salih is the Prophet of God? Yes, we believe in his message, they answered. We believe Allah is the true God, but the disbelievers openly denied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the rich and powerful men of Thamud. Some of the chiefs were against the Prophet too. They knew that the Prophet was a danger to their beliefs. One night, these evil men gathered together and hatched a plot to kill the poor she-camel. They took the help of their wives to convince nine strong men. These nine men agreed to kill the she-camel and her calf. Next day, they kept watching the camel closely, observing all its movements. As the she-camel came to drink water at the well, one of the men shot its leg with an arrow. The camel cried out loudly and it started to run. But the poor animal couldn't because of the arrow stuck in its leg. Then the others followed the camel and struck it with a sword on the other leg. The poor animal fell down crying. All of them used their swords to pierce the animal and finally it was dead. The killers were given a hero's welcome, cheered with songs and poetry. The disbelievers jumped up and down with joy for they had succeeded in killing the gift of Allah. The Prophet was heartbroken to see the poor she-camel dead. Enjoy life for three more days, for the God is sending his punishment. He shouted to the evil men who were dancing with joy. Why three days? They asked. Let the punishment come as quickly as possible, they said arrogantly. The Prophet once again tried pleading with them. My people, why do you follow the evil ways? Seek forgiveness from Allah so that you may receive his mercy. But they didn't listen to him and continued their celebrations. The evil men then plotted to kill the Prophet as well. But Allah saves the Prophet and his followers from their wicked plans. Heavy-hearted, they left the land of evildoers and moved to another place. And the day for the punishment arrived as the Prophet had warned. The disbelievers stayed inside their homes made of rock, feeling safe. Suddenly, thunderbolts appeared out of nowhere. And there were severe earthquakes as well. The land was violently shaken, killing every man and animal living in Thamud. Neither their strong buildings nor their stone houses could protect them. All the disbelievers in Thamud were struck. Everything in Thamud was destroyed before people could even realize what was going on. Only the people who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were saved because they had left the place. The arrogance and disbelief of the people could not save their lives, nor could their idols. Their large and extravagant buildings could offer no protection at all. God continues to send clear guidance, but disbelievers choose to ignore them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and the most forgiving. However, we should not ignore God's warnings. God's punishments as the people of Thamud experience can be swift and severe. MashaAllah, that was such a great story. I'm glad you liked it. Now the questions, Baba. <laughs> you are right. Are you ready? Yes. What sins did the people of Thamud commit? The people of Thamud were idol worshippers. Isn't that right, Baba? That's the correct answer. Now tell me, how did the people of Thamud challenge the Prophet to make them believe in Allah? They asked the Prophet to perform a miracle. And can you tell me what that miracle was? They asked him to make a living camel out of the rock they worship. And they also wanted the camel to be pregnant. Was the Prophet able to perform this miracle? Yes. When the Prophet prayed to Allah, 
a huge she camel emerged from the rocks and she was pregnant too. Masha Allah, that's very good. Now for the next question. What did the people of Thamud complain about? Let me give you three options to choose from. Option A. The camel was very naughty. Option B. The camel ate their sheep. Or option C. The camel drank all the water from the well. Hmm, it was option C. That's correct again. The camel was so huge that it drank a lot of water. The next question, how did God punish the people of Thamud? Allah sent huge earthquakes and thunderbolts to destroy the people of Thamud. That's right again. Thanks, Baba. I'll come back tomorrow and tell you the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Thank you, Baba. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a Waj'ala lakumus sam'a wal absara wal afida la'allakum tashkurun Which is mean and Allah brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers knowing nothing and gave you hearing and sight and hearts that you might give thanks. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some favors, some blessings that he subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us as a man, as a human, hearing, sight, and hearts. And what we should do with these favors, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship him, use these favors to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey him. So thank you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory be to Allah who created man and taught him what is good and what is not good for him. This is the end of our lesson for today, grade two. We are going to complete inshallah same lesson about Surah Al-Shams next session. Thank you. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك